The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Birch. Hey everybody, this is Birch. Uh, over in Joe Casada's uh, Substack, he recently talked about a method and uh, go read it for yourself because it's, it's there, there's more complexity and nuance that I'm I'm definitely going to do it justice here. But basically, relating some advice that Stan Lee gave uh, around focusing on on the character in a pitch. And uh, what's interesting about that is uh, a couple days earlier, um, I was uh, I would I've been in Japan and there was uh, a talk about kind of manga storytelling where. The message was always focus on the story versus the character. So it's interesting to contrast the two. Um, the advice that Stanley gave Casada, uh, I think, is good advice. Uh, like all things, I think there's there's nuance to kind of what's being said, and nothing should be taken as black and white. Like just focus on the characters, just focus on the story. It's not like that. Uh, but this this letter writer kind of writes in um, observing something similar. So let's uh, let's read that. It says, uh, "Dear Perch, as a fan of One Piece." Have you been paying attention to all the hype surrounding the upcoming appearance of Luffy's Gear 5 form in the anime? I mean, I have, so reading the manga, and I've, I've, yes, I've, I've been through the hype already. So, yes, I'm one of those, I read the book first, sir. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, I think the whole situation shows a very interesting difference between comics and manga that I would like to hear your opinion on. In my opinion, comics seem to sell characters more than they sell a story. Sounds odd, but let me explain my thinking. When a comic is adapted into a movie, they usually don't adapt any specific story. It might take some elements from a popular story or run, but the movie is usually its own thing with no real relationship to the source material outside of sharing some of the same characters. That's different from the manga, where they do genuinely adapt to the source material and make relatively few or minor changes. I think you see this in the comics as well. There isn't a singular story for characters like Batman or Spider-Man in comics. There are multiple versions of both of these characters, and although they share some basic tropes, each story is its own unique interpretation of the character. Compare that to manga, where there is one story for many of these franchises. There is one story for One Piece, mostly. Uh, not multiple versions of the story, but just one story. The story of One Piece. Uh, the mostly is the OVAs and, and things like uh, One Piece Red. It's hard to, it, like, where does that fall in continuity exactly? It's, uh, it, gets, it gets fuzzy. Uh, but manga's always had that kind of the, the OVAs and the movies can, you know, be their own thing. And, and kind of, the, it's, it's your kind of gated area where the stories can take on their own light somewhere else. Anyway. Let's finish up the mail. It says, I think this difference is a big part of why manga is doing better than comics. Just telling a single story creates a synergy between the different mediums and allows people to easily switch between different mediums when they want to consume more One Piece content. Uh, what do you think? Am I off base or something? Uh, no, you're not off base. Uh, I think, uh, so I deliberately started with the introduction of, the, of Joe Quesada's uh, uh, column, his Substack column, again, relating the Stan Lee advice. Because they're not, even though it sounds like these are two opposite sides of one coin, they're really not. And what kind of you're referring to here in this mail is simply that uh, the, the comic itself, or the manga rather, uh, typically has a arc, a destination, kind of a start, middle, and end mapped out. Um, and then the, uh, the story is allowed to kind of play through, um, as opposed to comics, which often creates the ongoing story. And in that world in the, in the U.S., I think it's hard not to focus more on the character when you're really juggling an idea of, hey, this comic is going to go on forever. This character can never be fully killed. We can make some adjustments to him, but not too many. And we probably always need the option of the bank to, you know, snap back to, uh, you know, whatever version of this character existed before, um, even though uh, the Spider-Man returns, you know, Spider-Man getting married to MJ and restoring that marriage and everything else. Even though, um, quite frankly, I think the uh, what's going on at Marvel Comics right now is stubbornness more than anything else around that topic. Uh, the reality is, as I said in the other video, if the movies conclude with Spider-Man um, you know, marrying MJ, and uh, they suddenly, whatever, marriage uh, becomes popular in Hollywood, some of these other things, they will restore the Spider-Man marriage. They have that ability. Uh, the fact that so many of you can fanfic write very, very easily how this marriage gets restored 
um, that's that's what comics are. They they always are leaving an escape hatch to everything. Uh, that is an advantage manga has, quite frankly, because they they have a you know there's a set end. Many of these stories conclude. You know that I'm not still you know picking up copies of Ranma One Half, even though I I wish I did. Um, there is an end to Demon Slayer. There's an end to Chainsaw Man. There's an end to even things like Alice in Borderland, uh, which has been adapted to Netflix. But there's there's an end to all these things, and it that does make it easier for people to pick up and people to flow back and forth between movies because you don't have to answer the question of hang on, where does this comic fall in the movie like timeline? Where is it? I mean, you know, One Piece, you know, as the example you used, it's beat for beat aligned with, the, with you know, manga and anime. So if you're reading along, you know if you want to flip over to watch it, you can, and you're going to be watching what you read, almost to the letter. And for a lot of people, that's a, that's a big benefit. You know, that's, that, that helps them kind of enjoy the, the content. Uh, the challenge that you have with, uh, you know, with U.S. comics is, as you say, when they do a movie or they're doing a cartoon, it has to be its own kind of story or they pick and choose a bunch of random elements. I mean, if you enjoy the Dark Phoenix saga, the Claremont Byrne Uncanny X-Men Dark Phoenix saga, and then you went to go watch the movie of the Dark Phoenix saga, uh, that's probably a pretty maddening experience because they they don't resemble each other at all. Like there's there's vague kind of, hints it's like oh gene gray's doing up to some shit i guess like that that's all you got so that therein lies the problem i think with uh with a lot of u.s comics and and at least one problem they have to overcome now the benefit is it's much easier to license and merchandise because whatever you need the character to do be or you know engaged with you can do it hey do you want to have a spider-man story with fortnite fuck it easy now, you know, manga is certainly able to license and do a lot of that stuff too. Uh, but it, it, you know, when a character is so incredibly malleable, it just, it's, it, it makes it simpler. So for the things that are really, really strong, like Batman and like Spider-Man, uh, it, you know, they've been able to monetize and, and make a lot of money off of it. It's why those, you know, characters, those brands are so incredibly popular. You know, I, I, you know, one piece as much as I love it as a net value of a brand is worth less than Batman. Batman's, you know, globally worth more. Part of it's because it can be whatever you want it to be. And there's other reasons too, but but that's a big one. And so if that's your goal to keep the comic going forever and just, you know, never end, then, you know, I, I focusing on the character starts to make a lot of sense because you, you kind of have no choice. You know, or you need to have a singular creator for a long period of time, and comics just aren't going to do that. You know, Mark Grunwald's cap run, you know, accepting, you, you just generally don't have that. Uh, or you have very distinct stories that might run like four or five years, and then there's a very, very careful handoff to the next writer. And I, for one, would love that. Uh, but, you know, that, that also, it, it goes against a lot of the strategy of U.S. comics, which is, uh, uh, there's, no, there's no cleaner way to say it. It's a pump and dump strategy of just get as many com comics out as possible. There's a reason why, you know, Batman, it's like Batman sells really well. Yeah, fuck it. Get three more Batman books out. You know, One Piece sells very well, but you don't see the Nami spinoff, the Zoro spinoff, the, you know, Thriller Bark prequel series around Halloween. The, I mean, like, you don't see all these, you know, duplications. You don't see X-Men or <laughs> X-Men, One Piece Ultra or, you know, just, just all these spinoffs uh, where, in theory that would make a lot of money. You know, My Hero Academia came out with My Hero Academia Vigilantes. That was somewhat of a big deal in order for them to do that. It's been successful, but if you think about, you know, Batman or Spider-Man or, I mean, like, they can whip out a, a zillion spinoffs. Uh, I, I'm giving you the reason why. Obviously, I think I prefer, as a reader, the story-based approach of one creator on a title for a long time, like Oda is on One Piece. I mean, he he has a vision. He knows where he's going. It's how he can build up the Luffy stiff gear and, and other kind of big story elements because he he knows in his head where it's going to end. And he doesn't have to worry about, you know, somewhere along the line, 
you know, he's not going to have his contract renewed and some random person he doesn't know is going to have to come in and, and just keep the title going in some other random direction. He's in charge and he's in control. That's a big deal. The kind of bigger question I have is, you know, in theory, that's image. Uh, that's a lot of kind of their value proposition, but you don't have any titles that are doing this. I mean, the, the obvious example you might have is Eric Larson's Savage Dragon. Eric Larson runs that thing. He owns it. He can do whatever he wants with it. So in theory, he has the end mapped out in his head. I don't think he does have the end mapped out in his head, though, because I think in, you know, for for Larson and a lot of kind of Western creators, they're they're wired to the keep it going forever model. And so this is why, you know, Savage Dragon is moving along. And then one day it's like, ah, fuck it. Let's just, you know, show vagina constantly in the in the comic, you know more power to them and everything else, but it's why they're like, let's move them to San Francisco now. Like that, that's, uh, he can do that, but it's, it feels very random. And the reason is it is, he wakes up one morning and says, ah, screw it. Let's take them to Canada. And he does it. Whereas I think a lot of the manga, you know, that they're competing against in some cases is there, there's a set story that's going on. And, and by the way, you know, it is worth noting Again, as much as I like the the method and I, I think it's the right way, um, you know, we're comparing One Piece to a lot of these titles and One Piece is the god. You know, so it's easy to it, it's easy to say, uh, you know, hey, this one thing is doing it really well. There's plenty of manga that that, you know, starts out, doesn't gain an audience and, and fizzles and, and never gets to where it wants to go. That that happens, too. So. Anyway, uh, let me know uh, kind of your thoughts on this, which you like better or worse. And thanks for listening. <laughs>